So my projects always start off with a sketch. And once I'm happy with the sketch and the proportions, then I cut those pieces out and I use it as my template. This template, um, I end up putting it onto foam and then tracing it out so that I have the perfect size pieces I need. Um, once it's traced out, I apply spray mount onto it. I'll link it on my Amazon storefront. And you gotta make sure it gets tacky before you sandwich it together. Um, once it's sandwiched together, you can take a kitchen knife to it, which is what I'm doing here, but that takes forever. This other option is way faster. It's a cordless um, jigsaw, it goes super fast. Mess gets everywhere, but it gets the job done. I also have used the hot knife, which is crazy scary, but you know, it's good for like the details that I can't get to with like a kitchen knife. So um, I'll also link the one that I've used before and always use a glove with this, good Lord, because it gets so hot. And then I always go back into it with a kitchen knife just to smoothen out the edges and get the details in there. And then after that, I go back with a wet sander. I put water on it, I sand it, so it gets really, really nice and smooth and it looks really good. Um, just going back and forth and then you will get the end result you're looking for. Then I, um, to secure all the body parts together, I put the hole into each body part and I use a uh, power drill with a bit just slightly larger or thicker than the um, bamboo skewer and I also add um, construction glue in there to make sure it stays put. So you can see here, I put the stick into both ends. I'm using these clippers just to cut them down to size. So once I'm happy with all the attachment pieces, that's when you'll go in with the um, construction glue, which I've used a couple different types, and the Gorilla Glue is my favorite. I also like to leave a little bit of an indent right at the outside to fill it up with more glue. Like you can see, I'm leaving a bigger hole right at the end. And that's just so that the construction glue really, really kind of seals that together. Um, but it's pretty easy um, and it stays put really well. And see, there's a gap there, but I actually use the construction glue to fill it up too. And I also always trace out the details on my foam pieces before I prime and paint it. So here you can see I filled up the gap with the actual construction glue and it worked perfect. After that, I went on to it with some Mod Podge that I mixed with some of my paint. Um, just to make the paint process go faster, I usually just do one coat and that seems more than enough. And then once it's nice and dry, that's when I go on it with the color. You can see in the next one that this is dry and it has a bit of grit, which is awesome. And then if I wanna cover like a larger area and I just wanna gloop some paint on, I usually use Liquitex Basics. It's thicker and it just goes on a lot faster. But if I'm doing something with more detail, I usually use Golden Fluid Line paints and I link all my paints on my Amazon storefront as well. The paint colors I use, um, so you can go there and you can basically get the exact same shade that I'm doing because I did a lot of mixing as well. Um, so here you can see I'm doing it with white, but at the end I end up tracing it all with a black thin paint line just to make it all pop. Another thing I did that was a little different is I made some stitch details on his clothing. Um, I figured that just gives it a little more interest and it's not so empty in certain areas. Um, I went along his sleeves, his back, his legs. Another thing I did is I actually painted the front and back side of his arms, his back, his legs, because I knew that when he was hanging from my roof, I wanted him to spin. So I didn't want any blank you know, surfaces or plain looking surfaces. So I did paint him on the front and back side, which is different from what you see in the movie. But I think it was a really good um, move to do and it adds a lot more interest on the whole project. These are his hands, which I painted with like a mixture of two different green colors. Um, I thought it was the perfect accent to go against the royal purple. It looked really pretty. Everything I paint is actually on this um, adjustable table and it's super helpful because of the glass base and it makes everything pop and also I don't have to stack things up in order to paint the other side. 
Here's a hole that I end up pulling a string through. It goes from his feet up to his body. This is his torso. This is a string. I tied it onto kind of like an anchor, pulled it through his head, all the way down his neck, through his belly and out his foot. So you can see that right there. And then once he's all strung up like that, I go back with construction glue to make sure I can make his head pose in a certain direction all the time. Cause I didn't want him looking straight on. I thought that looked a little boring. So I tilted his head a bit and I used the construction glue to make sure it stayed in that exact position. This construction glue is awesome. I've used a couple of different types, cheaper ones, different brands, and this one is the best so far. And I've linked this on my storefront as well. So as you can see here, he's nice and exactly how I had envisioned him in my sketch. Um, and then just basically I went from the roof. You can see that's the hole that has the string that goes through his entire body and he just hangs upside down. I'm going to dangle some lights from him. Also, the head is a completely separate piece. I started off with this mask I bought is terrible. I thought it looked really good at the time. Just stuffed some ping pong balls in him and had his eyeballs and it worked great at the time but now i really wanted something that had his real smile so this is me putting spray foam through his head so it has a pole god this stuff is really it's not the easiest thing to work with but it worked for the time so that was him he looked like bart simpson and i decided to put a real smile on him i used air dry clay i had to take it off so that the backside dry as well and I used the same construction adhesive to adhere it onto his face. After that, I applied a layer of Mod Podge because he goes outside. And I also used the same adhesive to make his hairline so he has more dimension. And I wasn't crazy about it being so far back. And this is another one of the golden brand fluid line paints. It was a great color to use. And I put some red around his eyes to just make him look a little more creepy. I really, really was happy with it. And I also ended up taking white paint and I kind of like painted out the pupils of his eyes because I wanted to be able to take removable black tape and just put pupils wherever I wanted to put it. So he could look to the left, to the right, upside down, whatever, cross-eyed. And that way it could make him look more theatrical. So I was really, really happy that I did that. Um, you can see here, I just had to do a couple coats to get it really, really pigmented. So then I also decided to paint his teal teeth that came with the mask. I wanted to paint them white. So it has a really high contrast against the teal smile. Um, I thought it was great. Also, the teal is all custom mixed and everything, but I link all my paint colors on my Amazon storefront. Here you can see he's totally done. He looks super, super cute. His eyes are looking like in a certain direction. And here he is hanging from the roof. You can see the rope is really stable and he's just missing his Christmas lights. I really hope you guys enjoyed, you know, following along. Um, please subscribe and check out my storefront for all the products. Bye.